Welcome back to Secret Weapons, and today we are taking a look at The Generation Loss Version 2 by Cooper FX. I think that it's safe to say that Cooper FX really made their mark with the first version of The Generation Loss. It kind of had this perfect storm of coming out during the rising popularity of the lo-fi pedal movement and kind of the resurgence of modern chorus. And this thing is not super chorusy, but it can be. Uh, the old one, I feel, is less so the case uh, than this one. But it just, it was kind of this, this moment. Cooper FX really had this moment where they captured both of those sides and really made something that, that drew a lot of people in. Um, Tom obviously runs a pretty small organization, and so uh, the Generation Loss was never in stock for very long at any given time. Uh, I've actually never played version one of the Generation Loss. I've only played the Chase Bliss uh, version, which I, I have. Let me let me find it. And I gotta say, with this one, I really, really fell in love with the combination generation control and low pass filter. Uh, you, if you've if you've been around my Instagram at all, you know how much I rant and rave about how much I love this thing. I think it's really potent. The sounds on it are incredible. Um, if you ever pay attention to kind of my knob configuration, I've always got the wow set a little bit low. Flutter is basically always off. There's something about the flutter in this thing that I just can't gel with. Enter version two. Version two kind of reimagines a lot of what's happening in this pedal. Uh, I find that the generation control is less aggressive, uh, but more usable across a wider sweep in the uh, control. Wow and Flutter are completely reworked and they are both endlessly more usable. Uh, I am finding that I am loving all sorts of sound combinations on this thing that I had not previously been able to access with my other generation loss. Um, the noise control on this uh, is actually fascinating. At noon, you have no noise, and as you move one way, it produces kind of present noise that's always there. And the other way, it increases the noise that is only there as your input signal generates sound. Really interesting choice and really usable, like the kind of thing that I would not have thought of to do in a pedal, especially a lo-fi pedal, but it makes so much sense being able to sweep in just a blanket white noise or just static on your notes is a really cool way of approaching these things. The high pass and the low pass are of course just a little bit resonant, so you get that nice satisfying kind of sweep as you as you turn the knobs. And the beauty of this is you don't have to turn the knobs. You've got expression, you've got MIDI. This thing is hyper, hyper versatile. Yeah, this thing is incredibly versatile. You have presets and you have a new switch over here for three different auxiliary, for three different auxiliary functions, auxiliary, auxiliary, whatever. Which are basically a turn things to max control, uh, something that just causes the pedal to freak out uh, while it's activated, a kind of granular hold. Uh, it feels very reminiscent of some of the stuff in the outward. Uh, it kind of just grabs your input signal, freezes it in place, and then allows you to manipulate it using the controls up top. Really cool. Uh, and finally, my personal favorite, it's almost like a record stop, like slow down thing. It takes it down like two octaves and really quiet. Uh, you heard that on the intro. Um, I was actually really, really impressed with this as a texture device on to build off of something else. Um, on that intro piece, uh, the main kind of thrust of the song is a single chord that I captured in the microcosm that's just kind of pulsating. And then I take that and I use this to add a ton of grit and a ton of character. And then I would kind of like low pass it out in a very kind of like EDM kind of way. Uh, Cause once again, the resonant filter on this thing is just right. Uh, and then using that aux function over here, uh, those like record stop slow down moments where it just vanishes out of the mix, all this pedal, so cool. No post-production, no fanciness, no studio trickery, just this. And that was actually a really interesting approach to take uh, with messing with this pedal because typically I roam the gen loss ahead of things like the microcosm because I really like to use it to add texture as an input signal so that the pieces that it picks that the microcosm picks up have the kind of lo-fi character 
and warble that this has to kind of add some more interesting dynamics to something that might otherwise be a little staticky. Uh, not staticky, a little static or a little samey or stagnant. But I wanted to kind of highlight this a little more dramatically for that piece, so I put it after the microcosm, and I found that being able to mess with this as something else has already done something bizarre to my signal, like time stretching or samples and holding and granular stuff, really cool. Like, if I was running a, mod a mono pedal chain, I would probably keep this way late in the chain for those kind of moments to be able to low pass things out because again the low pass on this phenomenal really satisfying like rivals my therme in terms of nailing the resonant filter on a low pass filter so good this i also feel maybe does a better chorus than the previous version it's got a little bit of a randomness to it that i find really satisfying i don't love consistent choruses i think um I don't like being able to hear where that repeat happens, uh, where the kind of tops and bottoms of the waveforms are. And I feel like this offers an added amount of dimensionality that you don't find in almost anything else except for this. The funny thing is, if you're here watching this, you almost don't need to hear me talk about it because the generation loss is a cult favorite already. Like I know people who are just waiting with bated breath for version two of this because they've either owned previously the version one or they just have heard videos, they've seen clips of the Chase Plus Audio collab one or the original one, and they just are already sold on it. So if that's you, then thank you for watching. And uh, there's gonna be some sound clips uh, up next if you want them, but uh, if, you're, if, you, if this is something that you've never kind of messed around with before, it's worth your time. It's it takes the lo-fi thing that's very trendy right now, but does it in a way that I find to be a lot more satisfying, a lot more engaging with more variety than just lo-fi on, lo-fi off. The low-pass and high-pass filters can give you anything from dark, murky stuff all the way through those kind of like thin 60s radiophonic, like brittle sounds. The wow and the flutter provide a lot of very interesting texture that you don't normally get out of a modulation pedal. I feel like I'm retrying some stuff, but I just, it needs to be said that this is very interesting in a way that very few pedals are. The generation loss is something really, really special. Uh, it's almost hard to talk about, so I think we just need to go to the top down. We're gonna focus on some of that filtering. Uh, we're gonna capture some stuff in the microcosm again in order to do so. Uh, We'll, we'll kind of give you some examples of how the, wow, how the wow and the flutter differ from one another. And uh, yeah, and we'll experiment with how dramatic you can make the generation and the noise controls on this. So uh, thank you for watching and let's, uh, let's go to that top down video. Okay, so before we jump into the generation loss, let's talk through the rest of our signal chain. Uh, we are going in the side of our board to the Cali 76, the preamp Mark II into the generation loss. From there, we are going to the Amp 100 by Milkman, then back to the Hologram Microcosm where we split to stereo to the Strymon Volante, the Strymon Big Sky, and the Strymon Iridium, which is only running cabinets with the Milkman providing the actual amplification side of things. So uh, here's that dry tone. I mean, dry tone, obviously, within the context of what we're doing here. <laughs> Here is the generation loss with wet signal only with basically all knobs set to do nothing. <laughs> so the reason we're doing this is so we can start messing with the individual controls to hear how you can kind of tear apart your signal in interesting ways. So let's start with the most obvious one, the generation control. played a previous one, you know that this is already a lot more subtle at noon than the old one would be.
And I really like that as a choice to change about this uh, about this version of the pedal because it kind of it gives you the opportunity to kind of get that really kind of subtle, not overly kind of torn up thing in the generation control, which gives you more flexibility to introduce things like the noise control, uh, your low and high pass filters, and the wow and the flutter. For example, when you bring the generation all the way down like this, it still sounds really, really pleasing and really cool, and then can be really cleaned up by doing just little things like taking a little bit of low end out. Again, this is uh, a great opportunity to bring in uh, the noise. You can hear as you go one way. It brings in just this ever-present noise that's just always there on your signal. Which, of course, can be filtered, which is awesome. But on the other side of that, you can start bringing in noise just when you're playing. Let's take the generation completely out of the equation there. So here's, once again, totally clean. back down oh, we're doing this again aren't we okay we're back hopefully it doesn't happen a bunch um I've had this problem before where sometimes I'll be running like a bunch of stuff on one uh, power strip and strum and power will start to get a little bit wonky on me. Uh, hopefully we don't see a bunch of that. So let's get back to where we were. So yeah, there's the noise being kind of partially introduced, which is really cool. That can actually get really aggressive even without... That can get really aggressive even without the uh, the generation mixed in at all, like, which by itself, I don't know what you would use that for. I guess you could kind of stack it. Okay, actually, that is that is quite nice. I like that. Let's bring in less wet, more dry, but completely noisy. It's like doubling your guitar with a broken speaker. I'm glad that you're coming along this journey of, disco of discovery with me. I actually, I really like that and I should have used it on that intro song. Huh, that's cool. Um, okay, we're moving on. Bring that wet back. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, let's play with uh, kind of how the character of the WoW and the Flutter uh, kind of build as you turn the knob. So we're back to wet. Everything is as straightforward as it can be. And let's bring in a little bit of that WoW. Where you can hear it start getting really seasicky. Oof, that that really bends. I'm not bending anything on these notes. This is all. <laughs> so like. I don't, I don't love that amount of pitch modulation, but you hear the absolute inconsistency there. I find that to be very useful if you're going to build something kind of bizarre with it. Flutter. version of Flutter on this is a massive improvement over the uh, original. Um, I basically never used the Flutter, I think I said this earlier, I basically never used the Flutter on my uh, Chase Bliss collab version of this pedal, but I find that I really like it here. Kind of stack the two of them together. And now let's make it a chorus. Once again, it's not, you don't get this to, to make a chorus out of it. You get it to make like a crazy broken chorus that you never would have thought you needed like this.
Okay, let's go back to full wet and play around with some of the auxiliary functions. Auxiliary functions? I'm recording this on a different day, and I still don't know why I don't know what that word is. I feel like I normally do. So, so this is the kind of like freak out version. <laughs> assign the parameters that you want to kind of go a little nuts but I just find that I love this pedal set slightly more subtle and I don't really need it to do anything super comical like that but if you change that that function we have that granular thing I was talking about Bring in the dry, you can play over it, of course. personal favorite. Take that dry back out. so cool it's such a it's such an interesting thing to have access to especially on such a kind of like creative unique so so often if you're doing like that record stop thing in a pedal format you're 90 percent of the time using some sort of tape machine style pedal um like the Stremen volante does it for example and it usually sounds pretty pristine like even the sound on sound looper on that still sounds pretty clean at its core it might sound like kind of broken tape but it's not it's not full on broken like this that gives you that like record stop thing, which I find to be very, very cool. Especially coming back up. I think there's a lot of value in having it stopped and like hitting a chord right before you come back in. Super interesting. Um, so let's circle back to a one of my favorite uh, applications for the gen loss in kind of my actual day-to-day -day and week-to-week -week writing, which is um, a slightly more subtle setting used to inform pedals down the line. So for example, the the, the my main thing is um, I really love the hologram microcosm. I love the weird stuff it can do to your signal. Um, the nature of the pedal is it doesn't do a lot of tonal changing. It does a lot of timing and movement and pitch and like LFO and ADSR kind of stuff, but it doesn't do a lot of like textural change. And as a result, a lot of the stuff that you can do with it feels like it's painting with a very limited set of brush colors. Um, the shapes are all over the place, but the colors are very similar. And if that makes sense, and I find that the generation loss gives a grit to something like that that I find to be incredibly valuable. So I'm gonna dial in kind of an interesting movement thing on the microcosm, and then we will reinform it with the generation loss. <laughs> Thank you. 